so good afternoon students today uh, we will be uh, starting with our starting with our new uh, uh, sub topic that is autotrophic nutrition before this we have also learned that there are two type of nutrition in our previous class one is uh, modes of nutrition one is uh, heterotrophic nutrition one is autotrophic nutrition okay so in this uh, we'll first we'll start with autotrophic nutrition okay so we know that autotrophic nutrition happens only in plants so today we'll go in detail with the autotrophic nutrition okay so tell me uh, like we all know that autotrophic nutrition happens in plants have you seen plants around you everyone everyone is aware yes, of the plants around themselves yes ma'am yes, yes right yes, so everyone has seen plants and trees yes, yes ma'am so yes, basically what is the difference between a plant and a tree anyone plants are small trees are big yes correct so today we'll see how uh, plants form their you know uh, food see basically we humans take from plants right our food we do not prepare it ourselves but plants prepare it themselves okay they take carbon and uh, carbon and energy require these are the requirements okay of the autotrophic or uh, see carbon and energy is other requirements of autotrophic organism and are full, fulfilled by the photosynthesis see the process of making a uh, food by themselves in the presence of sunlight and you know the chlorophyll and everything is called photosynthesis okay in the presence of sunlight and water and then uh, you get uh, carbon dioxide in presence of these three they make food and that food is nothing but glucose or sugar and they give out oxygen okay so today we'll see one more video in detail what happens or what exactly is the process in detail for plants okay is everyone ready please keep your yes, mobiles aside because i can see the vibe yes, i can hear the vibration please keep your mobiles aside keep any distraction aside okay and please be in a silent place where you can hear everything the amazing process of photo is everyone able to hear yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma okay fine okay no problem mute yourself the amazing process of photosynthesis a look around at nature is an absolute treat to our senses we all enjoy the colors and fragrance of plants but seem to forget about their important contribution. Plants are an absolute necessity for life on Earth. It is so because of the process of photosynthesis. A closer look at a plant shows that it is firmly held in the soil by the help of roots. These roots absorb water from the soil and through the tiny tubes transport it to the stem and then to the leaves. The stem holds the leaves in such a way that they absorb maximum energy from sunlight. A leaf is a very important part of the plant. Photosynthesis, the ultimate provider of food and oxygen, occurs in the leaf. A leaf consists of a flat, thin lamina, which is joined to the stem by a petiole. The flattened lamina provides large surface area for trapping sunlight. A cross section of the leaf shows the upper and lower layers of cells which are flat and irregular. Below the upper layer is the layer of tightly packed cells. These cells have specialized organelles called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain the pigment chlorophyll, which gives the green color to the leaf. The next layer has loosely arranged cells with large air spaces. The section also shows tubes specific for transporting the absorbed water into the leaves. 
The lower layer has many pores called stomata. Each stoma is surrounded by two guard cells, which regulate opening and closing of the stomata. A leaf absorbs carbon dioxide from the environment through these stomata, which after passing through air spaces, enter into the chlorophyll containing cells. Both water and carbon dioxide molecules are finally absorbed by the chloroplast. These chloroplasts also have the capacity for trapping energy from sunlight. And this energy is used to synthesize glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. These oxygen and glucose molecules diffuse out of the chloroplast. Glucose is transported through other specialized tubes to all parts of the plant aiding in their growth. The oxygen present in these air spaces diffuses out through the stomata. So during photosynthesis, oxygen is given as the life-sustaining gaseous component of the atmosphere, while glucose or food is transported to all parts of the plant and used for growth. To summarize, green plants can make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Plants are held in the soil with the help of roots. These roots absorb water and send it to the leaves through specialized tubes. The lower layer has many pores called stomata. A leaf absorbs carbon dioxide from the environment through these stomata. Both water and carbon dioxide molecules are finally absorbed by the chloroplast. Where in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight, they synthesize glucose and release oxygen. The oxygen diffuses out through the stomata. The glucose is transported through other specialized tubes to all parts of the plant, aiding in their growth. So everyone understood what is photosynthesis and how uh, it happens? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so uh, ca uh, can you yes, guess like what kind of se uh, section, you know, cross section happens and then how, what are the parts uh, would, uh, of the uh, leaf? Is everyone aware of it? See, I'll, in detail, again, I'll go with this. Okay, before that, I want to ask you that does everyone know, see, before getting into photosynthesis, I want to know that does everyone know what is osmosis? See, it's okay yes. if you don't know what is osmosis, say yes or no, that's it. So that you know, if you don't know, then I can teach you and then we can go further for, uh, this is just an overview of photosynthesis. So I can teach you in deep please for that I have to, uh, you have to know what is osmosis. So, you know osmosis or you want me to teach? Everybody, just say, if you, even if you want to say it in the chat, say it. Ma'am, explain. Ma'am, explain. Okay. Explain, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, explain, ma'am. So I'll now, um, here I'll tell you, uh, I'll show you something, then we'll discuss about osmosis, okay? And you have to tell me where, uh, where osmosis happen in plants, okay, everyone? Ma'am. Please uh, yes, off your the uh, background noises, please. Here's the cell on your screen. We have Can all everyone here. Yes, ma'am. Is everyone able to hear? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just just a minute. Already seen that the various organelles inside it are compactly packed inside this delicate membrane called the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. We've even seen that the cell membrane makes use of diffusion process to transport gas and water molecules in and out of the cell. However, diffusion is not the only process employed. There are a few more on the list. Let's have a look at these methods in this video. Tell me one thing. How do we transport water from a lower height to a higher height? We need a pump. Because this does not happen on its own. A force or some energy is required to pull the water upwards. Similarly, in a cell, some molecules have to be carried inside or moved outside the cell. This requires energy to be spent. The energy used is in the form of ATP molecules. This is called as active transport. That is, active transport requires expenditure of energy. The transportation is carried out by protein molecules present on the cell membrane. On the other hand, diffusion does not require energy. Hence, it's a type of passive transport. So movement of molecules without spending energy, as in case of diffusion, is passive transport. Similarly, movement of molecules across the membrane with the expense of energy is active transport. Now let's get to know one more interesting concept named osmosis. Have we ever come across this term osmosis? Well, quite often. But what exactly do we mean by this? Osmosis is defined as the movement of water from higher water concentration to lower water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So let's say we have this container which is partitioned by this semi-permeable membrane. Now we add sugar solutions at both these sides. However, the concentration of each is different. Here we add concentrated sugar solution while here dilute sugar solution. That means the concentration of water in this solution is obviously more compared to this. So after some time, we see water molecules moving from this side of the partition to this side. And how long will this movement take place? It will occur till the concentration of water is balanced, that is, equalized on both the sides. This is nothing but osmosis. Let's learn some more interesting concepts about osmosis and cell transport in the next video. We all have seen raisins swelling up when kept in water for some time. Any idea how this magic works? Well, it's simply the process of osmosis which results in the swelling of these raisins. You heard me right. It's osmosis process due to which the water from the surrounding medium enters the cells of the raisins, helping them to swell. Can we define osmosis once? It's simply defined as the process in which water moves from higher water concentration to lower water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. An interesting thing to know about osmosis is that the movement of water is affected by the amount of a substance dissolved in it. And what does this mean exactly? Let's conduct an experiment to understand it better. Let's take three plates or containers with salt solutions of different concentration in each. Let's add a few red blood cells, that is RBCs, in each. After a while, we notice that the first set has cells which are shrinked, the second set has cells that are just the same, while the third set has cells which are swollen or bulged. Any idea why this happened? Let's understand this. 
In the first case, the water content in the surrounding solution was less as compared to the cells placed in it. In other words, the salt content of the solution is more and therefore this solution is a concentrated one. That is the reason why the water molecules moved from inside the cells to the outside solution as the concentration of water was higher within the cells. Hence the cells started shrinking. This kind of solution is called as hypertonic solution. That is the solution with higher salt concentration. Now let's have a look at the second case. Here the level of salt and water seems to be the same on either side of the cell membranes. That is both within and outside the cell. Therefore there was a balance in the movement of water. What do we understand by this? It means that the movement of water was the same in either directions. As a result the size of the cell did not change. It remained the same. Do you know what such a solution is called? It's called as isotonic solution. The two solutions are isotonic when the concentration of water is the same on either sides of the semi-permeable membrane. Now let's focus on this third set. The cells in this case are surrounded by a dilute solution that is by higher water concentration. The salt dissolved is less and the water content is higher. Therefore, water molecules move inside the cells and hence the cells get swollen. Such a solution is called a hypotonic solution. In other words, solution with a higher water concentration compared to the other. This is how various solutions and their different concentrations help cells to sustain pressure and to survive. Movement of molecules across the plasma membrane is also influenced by the simple process of osmosis. Did everyone understand what is uh, osmosis now? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma what are the three types of osmosis? Wait, I'll ask. Wait, I'll ask. Wait, wait, I'll ask. Uh, Rims, Rakshata, tell me. See, I've given you the permission to mute, unmute yourself so you can mute, unmute yourself and. Okay, came and Bhagya Kullu. Yes, Varsha, Badige. Bediger? Ma'am, hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solutions. Okay, very good. Kem and Bhagya Kallu, tell me what is osmosis? Kem and Bhagya Kallu? I'm not able to hear you, Bhagya Kallu. It's okay. I'm not. There's some, maybe some, there's some audio connection problem. Kem and Bhag. From uh, Cayman from Sri Hari. So basically, osmosis is nothing but the movement of water from higher concentration to lower concentration, okay, through a semi permeable membrane, okay. So you have to remember this process. See, I've told you diffusion, diffusion also before, and um, now I'm telling you osmosis. So these are the processes which you have to remember because they'll come again and again in these processes. So there is not, see, there is a, no, uh, there should not be a confusion be between diffusion and osmosis. Of, uh, osmosis is nothing but uh, transport of water from higher concentration to lower concentration through a semi membrane. Okay. So if we go, move forward with the autotropic nutrition, we will see that the process of making food. Kanda language. Huh? What happened? Anyone? Okay. Anyone any is in doubt? See, this is a diffusion mixing throughout. Okay. I'm so sorry, just a minute. Huh? 
so now the process of making food on them with on themselves by the plants is called nothing but photosynthesis now see what are the inputs for photosynthesis and what are the outputs of such photosynthesis okay sunlight we need sunlight okay and then we need carbon dioxide we need water so these three combine and they give oxygen and sugars sugar is nothing but they are stored as starch in leaves okay so that they can use it for later stage now oxygen is given out which is used by us okay so we intake oxygen and we give carbon dioxide so that's the reason carbon dioxide is again taken by the plants okay tell me one thing that why people focus on planting so much all around the world you see that there is a uh, you know there is a movement going on that you should plant you should grow plants uh, you should increase the level of oxygen now tell me why we do this anyone see photosynthesis will go in detail tomorrow okay we'll go in detail because we see we have already seen the video that uh, the parts of the uh, cross section of the uh, uh, of the leaf now tomorrow again we'll go in detail so that you understand in better way okay so tomorrow study and come once just go through what is this and come okay so that when, once you come in the class you understand easily what happens over here see okay, okay? and plus tell me no, why people no. are so much focusing on planting the trees anyone because of ma'am uh, we want oxygen yes oxygen. yes ma'am and surrounding clean okay and what if we don't get oxygen we will die we will die okay again what are the other reasons for planting more trees ma'am ma'am for food animals Yes. Ma'am, because of rain, ma'am. Rain, ma'am. Yes. 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 Yes